and we want to have some extra wood in case we have to actually make more than that number just in case for whatever reason in case our budget is different we want to make sure that we have enough in order to cover the sales that we need to cover so therefore we're going to do a similar calculation here for the material so here's our production budget here we're going to use the production budget to create the raw materials budget how much material do we need to buy to make the stuff we're going to produce so we got the production in units we're just pulling uh, the production down the production in units down so here's the 19 here's the 20 here's the 20,005 the budgets are connected in this way that's why we got to do it in this order and then we're going to say materials required per unit so if we're thinking about guitars you could think well we're buying a plank of wood and we only need half the plank of wood per guitar so we can make two guitars out of the one plank of wood if we're talking about other types of things it, it may mean that we need multiple units of material in order to create the guitars so it depends what we're making and so you got to be careful on how many units is it going to take to make it. In this case, it takes less than one unit in order to make uh, the, the product. Therefore, if we're going to make uh, 19,586, half times 0.5, it's going to take uh, 9,793 of planks of wood, in this case, that we're going to cut in half for each of uh, the units we're going to make. So same thing here, the 20,000 to 10, the, the 20,005 is uh, the 20,250. Then we're going to have the budgeted ending inventory. So this is how much we would have if uh, we didn't want any cushion at the end. But we do. We want to have some material left over. We want to have some wood left over at the end of the month. So we're going to say uh, have this cushion in here. Now the calculation for this, and it's going to be dependent. The problem is going to have to give it to you. Uh, in real life, we'll have to put in some policy. The policy here is that we're going to take next month's uh, number. We're going to multiply it times 0.5. So that's the policy of this company. So... Uh, that's going to be the 5,000. We're going to take in next month the uh, 10,250 times 0 0.5, 5, 2, uh, 5125. And we would have to know October's number, which, which apparently is 8,000, in order to come up with this 4,000 here. So then if we then add these two up, we've got the materials needed for production. This is how much we want in Indian inventory. So the 9,793 plus the 5,014,790, the 10. 1000 plus the 5125 is the 15125 and so on so this is the materials required if uh, we didn't have any in the beginning inventory that's how much we'd have to buy but we're saying we did have some in the beginning inventory and how much is in there at the beginning of the inventory well we started off with 4925 and then in the next month we've got 5000 of course the beginning uh, inventory is now the ending inventory for the next month and same here the beginning inventory for this month is going to be a projected ending inventory for this month all right and then uh, we're going to say the materials purchased then is going to be the this number plus this number gives us the 9,868 uh, <laughs> the 15,125 plus the 5,000 is the 10,225 the 14,250 plus the uh, 5 one is the 9,125. We're going to multiply that times the material price per unit. So how much does it cost per unit? In this case, if we're talking about planks of wood. How much does it cost per plank of wood? This whole thing, we've been looking at units in terms of planks of wood. Now we got to turn that into dollars. And if we just multiply that out, then the 9,868 times the 21 is the 207,224, and so on and so on. And then if we add this up for the quarter, this is the sum in terms of dollars for the quarter. This is the sum in terms of units, in terms of, of uh, planks of wood or units of material in this case.